Malik, we got to talk to you earlier this week, and you were kind of talking about how you and Khalil's chemistry has kind of come along, and you guys dropped the term buddy ball. Again, Woodson just used it. I guess for either of you, both Khalil or Malik, how have you guys kind of, you know, now that you guys are getting more games under your under your belt, how do you guys see your on-court chemistry coming along? Um, it's just um, realizing what the defense is giving us. I mean, Khalil pointed it out to me that um, when the double team come, just the guy that's coming down to drop down, he's he's not really like – Helping down too much, so you could just throw it over the top, and I, and I finally caught. I got a glimpse of it, and then was able to make that pass over the top, and then the lob pass. Just looking back, I see my, you know, I seen Khalil running, so I knew my first instant in my head was, I'm not laying this ball up. This is going up top, making a highlight play. So, I just wanted to throw it up and uh, get the crowd hype um, and stuff like that. So, I made that work. But yeah, the the term buddy ball is definitely um, what me and Khalil have been looking at, um, especially when I'm at. Um, on the perimeter, I'm looking top down in the post. I'm trying to look for him, um, get some seals, early seals, early post ups, get big man, um, their big man's in foul trouble and stuff like that, um, so we can have an easier game playing their secondary um, unit and stuff like that. But um, yeah, buddy ball is huge for us. I guess Malika, along those lines, you know, you you watched Race and Trace last year. You you fit in with those guys. When you start playing with Kalel, when he comes in in the summer, and you start to learn his game and how the two you can fit together, what's what's different about him? What does he? How does he approach that position? Maybe in ways you know different from Race or Trace. Um, Kalel, he's a big frame, very agile, um, can move, and just um, just just knowing that any step he gets on his defender, he got a chance to raise up and and, and get down there to the top of the backboard. So I mean, you could throw it anywhere to him. So just just knowing that uh, he's able and, and, and got great hands when he's going up to go get the basketball, um, catch the ball well and stuff. But just looking back at Race and Trace, I mean, I've been seeing it, you know, the whole last year, the buddy ball system. And um, just when I'm in the game looking for Trace, too, I had a bunch of passes where I caught it um, high and threw the lob pass over the top to Trace um, um, last year, too. So, you know, just keep working on that and keep trying to find my buddy. For Khalil, um, um, the fans are seeming to respond to you very strongly with a block shot, certain rebounds, things like that. Are you sensing that, that uh, the reaction has been, uh, is it feeding you a lot? Are you noticing it? Uh, yeah, all the time. I love when the fans get involved into the game because it just makes us, well, not even just me, but the whole team, even the bench, just the chemistry grows, the the energy grows, and if we can just keep that going on in the fans, you know, just keep on cheering, I feel like we'd be great. Yeah, Khalil, do you feel like your confidence is kind of at an all-time high in terms of your collegiate career? I mean, you didn't really get a chance to, to shine as much last year. I mean, are you feel like you're in a groove now, finally? Um, I would say, I would say I'm, I'm more in a groove now, you know, uh, with Coach Woodson, you know, giving me that, that role where he trusts me enough to just go make the play and, you know, attack the basket, score, even throw it out to my teammates and just, you know, just play smart on the court. And as long as I'm playing hard and just giving them that, then we should, we should be good. Hey, guys, this is for either one of you. You guys have gotten out-rebounded through the first three games and, right, say, at 14 on the offensive glass. What would you guys attribute those issues to and how can you guys kind of turn that around ahead of the Empire Classic? Um, yeah, just prior, um, just prior to prioritizing boxing out um, and our guards coming in to help us. I mean, because um, for me, um, I'm switching one through four, so half of the time I'll probably be on a – a one man, and I'm trying to contest a 40 footer and trying to get in um, to rebound. So, you know, just trying to contest the rebound and, and making sure I get back to rebound and help um, Khalil out and not just expecting Khalil to get every rebound. Um, I think that's a big thing for us. And then just, just game rebounding too, also bringing the guards in to help on that, so to speak. I think we're going to prioritize that. And, and we know that we've been getting out rebounded. So, uh, we just got to prioritize that and, and make that a, a, a big issue for us. Yeah, for either one of you, um, X mentioned Sunday that uh, effort and practice maybe hadn't been where you guys wanted. Was there anything that maybe changed throughout the last week? Um, yeah, I mean, coaches got strict on us. Um, practice been hard. Um, we really got to um, um, step our focus up in practice and, and, and step our um, 
our whole attitude or our approach towards um, practice. And then once we do that, we should be, you know, fine and ready to go. Jack, the mic. Hey, uh, for Khalil, I'm looking ahead. UConn is next. You you, had, you played them last year, I guess. What what do you remember kind of about that matchup and how much are you looking forward to a rematch? You know, they have some talented bigs too. Uh, I'm looking forward to playing the team. You know, they're a tough team and we're just going to have to go and compete, you know. The, the past is the past. I'm, I'm with a new team now. They have a new team, so we just have to compete. Mike, then Trevor. Malik, on offense in the first half, you guys looked like you were really trying to push the pace off makes or misses. How much of a point of emphasis was that this week going into this game? Uh, that was huge. Um, just trying to get a flow. I mean, I, we're very static, uh, um, especially when we're trying to get into offense. So we already have set plays called. So, um, I, I mean, I was telling X. I mean, if I get the, if I get that um, the inbounds, I'm, I'm pushing. We, we got to push the pace. Um, advance passes up the court, even the swing pass to me, and then starting the offense or initiating um, some type of movement so we could get the, um, the basketball move side to side and then get into our initial thrust. I mean, we did that very well in the first half, I believe, um, just getting those advanced passes up. And then even me, when I am um, when I get it on the um, the break, to swing it up to Gallo the one time, um, the advanced pass up the um, sideline. So, I mean, it's a big priority that we um, set in practice. Um, just trying to get flow and, and, and different movement and, and create different um, uh, matchups and switches and angles that we can um, explore um, when we come down the court. Uh, against these smaller teams, both of you have to guard on the perimeter a lot. H how challenging is that, and uh, what do you take away from that kind of going into the Big Ten season? Um, it's definitely challenging, but, I mean, Coach won't um, give us no challenge that we can't handle. Um, I mean, um, just guarding little, you know, six-footers or, uh, you know, six-one people. Um, as, I mean, they're, they're quick than you, so you got to give a little step, uh, a little step, but uh, be able to contest the shot when they're ready to um, pull up which is hard because you're trying to give space so you won't get blow pass, and you're trying to not give the shot up, so you got to do two at once. So, you know, you just got to be, you got to really be focused, locked in, and, and ready to go when when they come your way and they're trying to attack you. Okay, thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.